During a new interview, billionaire Elon Musk said that his Neuralink company hopes to start implanting brain chips in humans sometimes next year. Kind of intriguing, but I don't think I'd get the first one. I mean, you remember the iPhone one? Exactly, you know? You get the first chip and in three years, everyone will be like making fun of you. You got the one? It's one of several massive leaps in brain science technology that is literally creating a future of potentially infinite possibilities and also concerns about how this technology could be used or misused. It was the viral video moment seen around the world. In April, a monkey playing a game of Pong using only its mind with the help of what's called a Neuralink. The device is Elon Musk's latest venture into a fast evolving tech space. Tiny chips that get implanted in the brain. Sounds like something out of the Matrix, but this is not a movie. Welcome to the real world. Brain chips are part of a revolutionary field that's been around longer than you think. Is this science fiction? Or is this reality? It is absolutely science fiction that has turned into real science. What Elon Musk did with these monkey trials showing how monkeys with brain chips could control computers with nothing but their minds, the, the first version of this happened in the 60s. And have you ever thought about being able to unlock your car or pay at the store just by waving your hand? Well, a body piercing expert is bringing that to the future in Lansing with a new product. Josh Sanchez is here for you with a look at chip implants. Lanier was interested in technology, so he combined it with his love of body modification to come up with this. I, I felt that it belongs in the body enhancement industry. It is an enhancement. The future will be based on it. The implants with RFID and NFC technology can be connected to smart devices, and it can act like a virtual wallet. The implants are not completely new. Employees at a company in Wisconsin were voluntarily chipped in 2019. I'm here at a time in life when this was unheard of, when it was just movies as a child, you know? So now to see that this is actually a thing that's happening and I'm a part of it, it's historical. Experts predict that BCI has the potential to be a $3.85 billion industry by 2027, according to Allied Market Research. But with great promise comes great concerns. You're going to have to share your brain data with private companies. Are you willing to share your brain data only to have a better interaction with your nearby devices? This is the question. What are the other ways it could be used that, that causes pause? The peril of this technology, the risk of this technology is if we push too hard too fast, you can, you can use it for virtually anything. When we go beyond trying to help people who are, who are struggling, uh, paraplegics, quadriplegics, locked in patients, people who can't speak, to improving people who are normally functioning, um, you know, giving you a brain chip as an example, uh, it, it, it's almost downright frightening. Engineers at Northwestern University have developed a flying microchip. It's about the size of a grain of sand and does not actually have a motor or engine. It flies around by being dispersed by the wind. Here now to tell us more about it is Northwestern professor and bioelectronics pioneer John Rogers. Good morning. Hello. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm sure you anticipate that this makes uh, people nervous that uh, they're it's going to be easier for people to spy on other countries, spy on us. To those people, what do you say? And then finally, technological innovations that change the world. I don't know if you follow it closely at all, but the big concern in the U.S. right now is that China is outpacing the United States in 5G technology. And what's the thing with 5G technology? It runs everything better and faster as you more ubiquitous, it becomes something in everything. My, uh, my kids are, got me a, a pair of uh, sneakers for, uh, I think, Christmas, my birthday. Yeah, it was my birthday. And uh, I was reading the brochure on them because they're, you know, they're, my kids tell me they're really hip and they're really cool. It's okay. And I find out it has a chip in the shoe so that you can verify its authenticity until you want to trade it or sell it. And I thought to myself, next time I go to the airport, I'm not wearing those shoes. <laughs> but I mean, you, you begin to realize that everything is chipped, but who can access it the most quickly? And I haven't even touched on the issue of cyber warfare, which we're also losing at and falling behind. That's simply the greatest fear. It was. Just last month, 
little more than four weeks ago, the Israeli government sponsored an international conference. They invited 10 nations, funny number, I don't have to come and come 10, as well as the IMF, the International Money Fund, the World, World Bank, and the Bank of International Settlement. They're the ones who handle all the transitions around the world for a plan how to respond when Russia and China launch cyber warf well, warfare on the U.S. economy. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to defend against that? We already know the last week that there was six separate attacks by the Chinese against our uh, financial systems and many of our state governments. It's a constant ongoing thing. I had one guy whose job is basically chasing these things down and trying to stop them. He said, there are so many, they're coming so fast, there's no way we can keep up with it. They're just overloading us. Technological innovation means the ability to shut down your systems so they no longer function. So as at the same time that every government in the world is moving into a digital currency, every one major country in the world is moving. They're very, if you read the articles, you see they're, they're, they're going there. They're going to a digital currency. It's happening. It's coming. As they're doing that, they're also looking at the fact that we now have this incredible vulnerability. And I know you're saying, well, what about cryptocurrency? Well, you, your president has just uh, sponsored a new bill to bring that under government control as well.